Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone. A few weeks ago, I did a video about the Insta360 Sphere, which is what I have right here on my Air 2S. Now this is custom made for the Air 2 and the Air 2S, and it is a 360 camera that makes the drone completely invisible and allows you to get some amazing shots as I showed in my previous video. However, I did mention in that video that in order to use the files that you take with this camera, you have to pull them into either your uh, mobile app or your desktop app and do a little bit of work in the Insta360 software to make them usable for your videos. Now, that can seem a little daunting if you've never done it before, but this video is gonna teach you a few tips and tricks on how to do that, so stay tuned and we'll get going. Okay, since I already did a review of the Sphere camera, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I will tell you that it was designed specifically for the Air 2 and the Air 2S, and it fits really well on both those drones. I've tried it on both my Air 2S and the original Mavic Air 2, fits great. It does not interfere with GPS as long as you acquire your GPS signal before you attach it. What you wanna do is not have it on there, but set the drone down without the camera on it let it acquire you know, 15, 20 satellites, and then put it on, and then there's no problems, or at least I haven't had any, with GPS signal acquisition or with it holding in place, et cetera. It does make the drone fly a little bit less smooth, and it does cut your flight time a little bit. So just be aware of that if you're flying out over water specifically with this on, you won't have as much flight time because it's carrying that payload. But overall, very, very well built. It does have these two lens protectors, that go on it when you're uh, not using it or not flying. And then it does have these little plastic pieces that press on to the top. They're called, I think, sticky guards that go on top of the lenses. So that if you did scratch something, you would scratch that, you could pull it off and put another one on versus scratching the lens and having to replace either the lens or the whole camera. That said, I wanna get into the actual software. For the sake of this video, everything that I shot was in 5.7K at 30 frames per second just for consistency and because that's sort of a default setting for this camera. It does do other resolutions. And what's really cool is you can export the footage in multiple uh, resolutions and or aspect ratios for things like TikTok or for Instagram or for YouTube shorts. Um, it has lots of options for that, but we'll get into that in a moment. So let's start by talking about what you have to decide when you open up the software. So you'll initially have the INSV and INS. P files. INSV is your video files. INSP is your picture files. We're only going to really talk about INSV, but you pretty much edit the two similarly um, in the software. INSV is a raw video file straight off the card that goes in this uh, camera. You have to run it through the software, process it, and export it as something like an MP4 so you can use it in your editing software. So before you start editing, you need to decide the purpose of this particular clip. Do you want to reframe it and make it something where you're choosing the frame, choosing the angle of the camera and exporting it as a flat file, a 4K file or an HD file? Or do you want to actually make it a 360 video? You can actually upload 360 videos to YouTube and people can click around and move their phone and actually look around the scene. That's a whole other story. I'm not gonna get into that, but know that that's an option. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna talk about reframing only. So when you first open the Insta360 application, you'll see a few settings that are uh, over on the right-hand side. Number one, you wanna have flow state stabilization turned on. It by default will be turned on, and just understand that it's really the genius behind how the footage looks so smooth. You're not gonna have that without the flow state stabilization. So turn that on, make sure it's turned on. It should be turned on by default and it is basically just oversampling the video a little bit and then moving the video within the frame, frame by frame, so that it keeps whatever you were filming at that moment in the center. So all that jitter goes away. Number two, if you have the sticky guards on your lenses, there is a little checkbox that says you have them on or off. Turn that on if you have the sticky guards on, turn it off if you don't it will do some sort of computer algorithm within the software to compensate for having these on. I know that like for instance, with an Insta360 camera and a water casing, if you have the water casing around it to protect it from water so you can take it underwater, there's a little button you can click and it will actually compensate in the software. Same thing with this one. So if you're using the little sticky guards, make sure that's checked. And then there's the color plus setting. 
Now I've done stuff with the color plus setting on and off. And personally, I like it on. It saturates the video a little bit. It gives kind of a HDR effect to it where, you know, the darker sections come up a little lighter and the lighter sections become a little darker so you can see the color like in the sky. So personally, I like to have the color plus turned on, but that's not mandatory. As a matter of fact, you can sit and just turn it off and on within footage, like in a single frame, and you can see the difference in what it's gonna look like. There are a few other settings that are turned on by default within the software, and that's okay. Probably just wanna leave those the way they are because Insta360 pre-configured the software to work with whatever camera you're using. Uh, you can go through and play with them, but generally for the rest of the settings, I leave them in their default position, which in most cases is on. Of course there is audio and there is a focus on voice button. I think that's not really applicable to this camera because for the most part, drone footage, the audio is not gonna be very good because the motors are really loud and the propellers are really loud and you're not gonna hear much except for the whir of that. If you want that effect in it, you can leave it on, but otherwise I would just turn the audio off and not even worry about it. Okay, so everyone who has used editing software before, you might already know this, so please excuse and skip forward if you already know this, but I wanna talk about keyframes for people who don't know or aren't familiar with them. Keyframes are basically when you are picking the direction of the camera and you're picking the time at which it's gonna face that direction. So because the sphere shoots in all directions at all times, you have to tell it, okay, right now I wanna be looking up at a 45 degree angle, and then 10 seconds from now, I want it to go to the right and down slightly. And what it'll do is you put a keyframe at that first mark where you're up at the 45 degree angle, and then you put a keyframe where it's down and to the right slightly 10 seconds later in the timeline, and what it'll do is it'll smoothly interpolate everything in between there, and the camera will pan from that up uh, 45 degrees to, to down to the right um, very smoothly. And it kind of looks like a camera move. It looks really cool. And that's really the secret sauce is you make these keyframes that allow you to reframe on the subject that you're interested in seeing or to reveal a subject or to make a subject go away or to do all kinds of cool effects. And so playing with the keyframes is the number one thing you want to do when you start. Drop your footage in, pick some keyframes, decide what you want to look at within the frame and then let it stay there for a few seconds, and then pick another keyframe looking at something different so that the camera can move around. It's really you telling where the camera should focus. And if you have one ideal thing that you're focusing on, like a main subject, it's pretty easy. And in other cases, you might have several things that you wanna show, but you can reveal them by moving the camera around using the keyframes. So once you've placed the keyframe, meaning you've decided what the camera's looking at and where in the timeline it's looking at it, you know, at what time it's looking at it, then you can pick the look. And there's four little buttons. There's a little uh, grid on the right that is called natural. And that little grid is sort of what a natural normal field of view would look like with uh, very little distortion or fisheye. There's tiny planet, which looks like a tiny planet. And there is crystal ball, which looks like a crystal ball. And then there is standard, which shows a little fish icon because it's a little more of a fish eye look. So natural and, and uh, standard are pretty similar, but if you click between them, you can see the difference. Generally, the natural looks flatter. Everything looks like more of a grid, whereas the standard is a little bit more warped and looks a little more fisheye. Now, one really cool thing you can do is you can pick two of these different looks and transition between them. So you can go from the standard look to the tiny planet and then hold on the tiny planet for a few seconds so it looks like you're kind of flying over a tiny planet with trees and stuff kind of poking out of it. And then you can go from there and you can actually distort the tiny planet to an infinite number of possibilities. You can just slide up and down with your mouse and it will actually squeeze the tiny planet or unwrap it, but you can stop at any point and create a new keyframe. So if you only want to unwrap the tiny planet halfway and just make it look like kind of a big warped image, you can do that. If you want to unwrap it all the way and make it look pretty much like the natural view, you can do that. Or if you want to pull it in the complete opposite direction, you're actually going to take the tiny planet and pull it to where it looks like the crystal ball, to where it's more of a sphere and a circle in the middle. These are all things that are hard to describe. They're easier to show, so hopefully I'm showing you some good shots of that. And you just have to play with them to kind of see what the effect is. But know that every time you create a new keyframe with a different look, the Insta360 software is going to create a smooth transition between the first look and the second look, 
and that's what really makes the video look cool. One other cool feature that's in the software that you can do is there is a snapshot button. And what that does is if you find a frame in the video that you really like and you like the way it looks, maybe you've manipulated the crystal ball or the tiny planet to a position where it looks really cool, you can hit that snapshot button and it will export it as a still image. Something to keep in mind if you find something that might be a good thumbnail, for example. So one of my favorite features of the Insta360 software is the deep track. It allows you to create a square or a rectangle around an object and the camera will automatically follow it or the scene will automatically follow it with the camera. Remember, the cameras aren't moving, they're just filming everything. So in this case, I had my son on a jet ski, I put a square around him and then as he went, the drone uh, was flying and I was, I was flying the drone to keep up with him and trying to kind of keep him in view using the DJI camera on the drone. But at the same time, the Insta360 keeps him perfectly locked in the center. And quite honestly, he saw that footage and he said, Dad, how did you keep me so well centered? And I was like, well, I kind of cheated. I used the deep track. It really makes you look like a great drone pilot because it can track things better than most drone pilots can in the air following an object like a car or a jet ski or something like that. So you can also make the scene spin completely as if you executed a perfect roll with an FPV drone. I've done that several times and what's cool about it is it's not like you're rolling a regular 4K or 1080 image where you might see black unless you stretched it. It's actually got so much more data to play with that it's a very clean roll. It goes all the way around and you can do a 180. You can flip upside down for a second and come back. There's all kinds of things you can do with that roll uh, to make the footage look more like an FPV drone flying uh, and doing tricks, rolls, spins, etc. So in addition to the FPV roll, there are other little uh, adjustments you can make to get rid of distortion or that fisheye look. So if you wanted to get rid of the fisheye look altogether, you can go in and tweak those things and it will actually straighten things out in the image. Um, I generally don't bother with all that unless I'm doing something for a client. You know, if I was gonna do something with like real estate, they might want everything to look perfectly level. But I feel like that little bit of warping gives the whole thing sort of a surreal, cool vibe. But those controls are there in case you do want to use them. Now, one more trick that the Insta360 software has that's really cool is the speed ramp. And basically, you've seen this done many times, but it's built right into this software so that you can do the speed ramp natively with your Insta360 file and not have to do it later in, say, Premiere or um, some other program. So the way you do this is you just click the little lightning bolt and then you drag over to the location where you want the speed ramp to be. You can drag it between two different keyframes or you can make it as wide or as narrow as you want. And then you can pick the speed that you want it to go at. Say you're doing a maneuver and then it's gonna take your drone a few seconds to get to the next place, but you don't wanna make a cut. So you could speed up to where it's going to the next location through that speed ramp and then have it slow back down and do the next, you know, whatever trick you're gonna do with the software or the shot. It's really just a great way to keep the audience engaged and take the boring parts out of the video. And one more thing I wanna to talk to you about is exporting the videos. Now, when you go to export the video, you do just like you would from any other program. You have to tell it where you want it to export it to, what you want the file name to be. And I always encourage people to use descriptive file names so they can figure out the difference between this one and this one. And then finally tell it what size, meaning pixels, horizontal and vertical, and aspect ratio that you want it to be. And what's really cool about the Insta360 software is they make it really easy for you to export it in different aspect ratios. So for example, if you're doing regular YouTube and you want it to be 16.9 aspect ratio, go ahead and do it. You can make that a 4K 16.9 aspect ratio. You can make it an HD 16.9 aspect ratio. You can make it an SD 4.3 aspect ratio or you could do 916 for TikTok or Instagram, or um, even YouTube Shorts uses the taller format because people hold their phone this way when they're watching. So basically you need to just know what you're gonna do with the file. If you're exporting it for consumption online uh, directly, then you might just do it at 10 megabits per second, 15, something like that. And if you're exporting it for editing into a master file that you'll use in a project and edit in another software package, then you might want to put it up higher to like 25 or 50 megabits per second. Just play with it and see what the right balance of file size and quality is for you. And now I'm going to do a little bit of editing on the phone just to show you what you can do with uh, the phone in case you don't want to 
go out and use your laptop or anything like that. So as you can see, I opened up my gallery and now these clips are showing up. So I can open up a clip here of um, from today where we flew out over the water tower. And what you can do is you can hit this snap button, slide the bar to zoom in and out. So this is the bar for zooming in and out. And you can zoom all the way down to tiny planet like that. Or you can slide out to kind of a normal view. Um, and then you can hit record on this right here and it'll start recording the actual footage and as you move around, it's actually creating keyframes within the footage. I'm gonna hit snap, and I'm gonna go ahead and get to further into the footage after we've taken off. And let's say we just wanna show this water tower as we approach it. I'm gonna drag a square around it, and then I'm gonna hit record, and it should keep that in frame automatically, which it did. Oh, and what's interesting too, you can see as I move the phone around, it moves the scene around. So if you prefer to edit like that, you can, or you can just move it with your thumb with the touch screen. Now I could take that clip and export it to my photo album if I wanted to. The snap feature in the app on your phone is a great way to reframe a shot and do a little bit of editing to it so that you can have it directly on your phone if you wanna post it directly to social media from your phone, like Instagram or TikTok or something like that. So it's a pretty cool feature that allows you to do things in a variety of ways. I personally prefer editing on the laptop, but the snap feature is kind of a cool feature if you wanted to get a quick clip out onto social media or share it with friends or whatever. So hopefully this has shown you that using the Insta360 software is not too hard and it gives you a ton of creative freedom when you're post-producing all the footage. Let me know what you think about the Insta360 Sphere, about Insta360 cameras in general, or anything else related to drones and cameras in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks for watching.